Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you may be, or good evening or good night. This is Jen at Jen's Arty Inclinations, a place to create, share and play. JJ Weekly-ish. I've discovered that while I'm junk journaling, a lot of it is like a creative practice. What a fun, easy, beginner-friendly way to do creative exercises, improve our artistic confidence and, you know, refine your personal style or find it if you haven't found it already. So to kick off JJ Weekly-ish, I thought I'd start with something really, really simple. Oftentimes in my journals or just in my sketchbooks, like what I'm going through here, I'll actually use watercolours and things like that just to make a painty background. And then I might fill them in with doodles like you saw there, or I might do a picture like you saw with that little ocean piece. So they sort of, you know, become something and it's a little bit easier than looking at a blank page. So what you need is water, paint brushes, look, kids ones are fine, I've got my nice ones here, some paper towels and the actual roll, they help make some impressions, stencils are another good way to do that and anything you can spray water out of is going to be fabulous. And finally, watercolours. Now, look, I love using my good stuff. When things are a joy to use, then I think you enjoy the whole process more. However, I started this out just by using kids watercolours and I really can't tell the difference in the results. All right, so one of the easiest ways to make a background is to splatter. The one on the right, I sprayed with water first. The one on the left, I left dry. Try it, you'll see the different results you get. Next up, I decided to just keep it simple and do some really simple shapes. Here I'm doing circles, but you can do hearts, you can do triangles, you can do a more complex shape if you like, maybe even stars, but just the one shape and repeat it all over the page. Here I used the same shades of blue and green. I'm kind of going, you know, nature, blue sky, green trees, pretty much throughout this whole thing. Here I'm just blotting off a little bit of the colour. I could have blotted off a lot more, but I just wanted to see some of that vividness. Next, I'm just trying some lines. You know, again, it's just putting marks down on the page. So really, all you're doing is you are just playing like you were when you were a kid. Don't think too much about it. Just get the paintbrush and the paint on the paper. You can do it with less water. You can do it with more water. There is my little round brush just to show you the sort of thing I'm using. The next one, I actually just did circle outlines. But even this taught me so much. It taught me about how much water I was picking up on my brush. And that is where the importance of this as a creative practice is actually really helpful. Because what you're getting to do is you're getting to understand the materials that you use. You're actually getting to practice something over and over again. So your hand starts to get more used to using the watercolour, picking up the right amounts that you like the results in. You know what I'm getting at? So it really is useful because we will use this for collage fodder. We'll use this for pages we'll use it to cover bookmarks we can use this for so much stuff we can just punch page tabs out of it in the end now you'll notice at the beginning of that all I did was sprayed it with water to saturate it the next one I decided that I would actually get the paintbrush to saturate the paper this is just printer paper so there's nothing fancy about it. It's not actual watercolour paper. You will get a different result if you're using watercolour paper. But again, using this material means that I'm feeling less precious. And when you add the paint, it somehow sort of does give the paper a bit more structure. So on the first one, I just used my brush to blot colour into it. On this second one, I just blotted colour across the top of the page and let it run down the page. I literally tilted the placemat that I put it on. So that's what I was using, just placemats, little, you know, thin, cheap cutting boards, because then I could just work on that as like a little surface and just put it aside to dry. And some of them I let dry naturally, other ones I used my heat gun on. Ah, now... Here we're into stencils. So this is when we start to have a bit more fun. You've played a bit with your watercolour now. You've got a bit of an idea of how your brushes are working, the different results that you're getting with more water, less water, that sort of thing. 
you're just playing, you're not really thinking about your end result, you're just enjoying the colours. You might be thinking about what colours go together on your palettes. You might be testing out a new brush. You might be testing out a new stencil. Now, with the stencils, I just actually like adding lots of extra water because I like them smooshing underneath the stencil and getting that imperfect imprint. Just a bit of an effect that, you know, I did when I was trying to get a perfect stencil one day. There, I didn't like that splodgy bit, so I put another stencil over it and then I was happy with it. All right, so then I got, you know, a little bit more precise and I did a border and this is where I wanted to make a lined page because I can actually copy these. I'll tend to scan them just using a little app on my phone and then I can print out a whole heap. But yeah, I wanted some of my own lined pages because I'm always looking for lined pages to add to things and, you know, I resent buying them when I can make them. Next, I was just doing a wash with all different colours. I added loads and loads of paper. Even though it was printer paper, you know, it all worked out. Here is that cardboard roll. And when you press that into the wet paint, it soaks up a little bit of the paint and so it leaves this impression. So think about that. There are heaps of things you can use that you can actually make an impression in watercolour, which is so much fun. Here, I used so much water in this one. See how much is soaking up in the paper towel? So then have a look. It's actually got the pattern of the paper towel in the paper. I hope you can see that on screen, but you get that lovely wavy line in the paper. So yeah, there is so much that you can do. Next, I just wanted to big, really wet, splodgy, splodgy, splodgy uh, watercolour you know, background where it went all over the page. So lots of water, lots of paint, just kept dabbing it in and spreading it out and spreading it out. What really amazed me about this one is how much water the paper could actually hold. I was quite stunned. And I was also stunned at how vivid these particular watercolours that I had dried. They actually stayed really nice and bright. So that was a bit of a surprise because your watercolours will always pale off. Next, this is so fun. All I did was crinkled up my paper, then put watercolour over it. And then what happens is it sinks into the creases. The beautiful part about this is you can really wash the colour out and you'll still see those creases. So here, this one's really bright and it's actually a lot wetter than what you can see on the screen. Then I just put another crinkle piece over the top and I just kept putting them over each other. And I was mixing up the colours. I just kept adding different colours on top of them and it just kept sinking into those gorgeous crinkles. And yeah, love them. So once these are dry, you can iron them so that they're nice and flat or you can leave them with that nice crinkle. A lot of fun can be had with these, let me tell you. And you can leave them, you know, really, really strong or you can really wash them out. I actually wash them out so much. But yeah, like I say, I was like, okay, I'll do blue and then I'll put green on top of the blue and, and then I'll put some purple and then I'll put some bright yellow and adding all those different colours. It just kept adding more dimension to it. And I would never continue to add just whatever colour just happened my brush happened to glance over which is pretty much how I did these so yeah I don't know oh I, I did end up doing a lot of these they were fun to make and this is the best part about junk journals this kind of thing is all going to be used in junk journals in some form or another so what you're actually doing is you're getting to practice with your materials, you're getting to practice techniques. And then in the end, you've got these papers that you'll actually be able to make all sorts of stuff out of. And I think that's what's really cool about junk journals because you are learning things. And a lot of this stuff, you know, that I've done here, I've actually ended up going away and putting them into a painting or, you know, realising, oh, I didn't know watercolours can do that. And so doing something else. So here we are with some of the ones I did.
did and just on the one side and so then what I'm doing is just putting a back on them some of them I'm flicking you know paint on others I'm just doing a wash over I'm kind of letting them pick up color from the previous one that I've done really just mucking about quite happily on the backgrounds of these oh this was the other thing you can glaze so another watercolor technique is you can actually okay I've overglazed there but it still worked out but you can actually put a light wash over a watercolor that you've already put on so that is really helpful to learn how far you can go and how far you can push that and then look at this one with the circles this ended up being my favorite I would never have thought to do circles and then do a stencil over it was I not just mucking about for pages that didn't have to actually be anything they didn't have to end up as anything you'll be amazed even if there's a sheet that you think you don't like I promise you if you just cast your eye oh and there was the easiest way to do the background see with a paintbrush that's actually was just from the hardware but all these pages even ones that I'm like eh, not so wild about if you take a little snapshot of just an inch by an inch I bet you'll be able to find a page that you love and nothing has to be wasted I've doodled on one of the stripey backgrounds there and oh, <laughs> I really love that piece with the circles. As I said, I would never have thought of it. And these crinkly ones, I cannot wait to make them into journal pages. And look, even if I don't like them, I can just rip them up into collaging or cover something with them. I can just do so much with them. And that's where junk journaling as a creative practice is wonderful because you actually get to kind of store all this stuff that you might just be practicing with and you get to store it all in this beautiful what becomes a beautiful piece of artwork in the end something that you actually made it's a more practical way of having a creative practice so I'm just marking off you know day one of junk journal what did I call it JJ weekly-ish that's right so it's all about as I said building our creative confidence hope you enjoyed and I will see you for the next one which is all about drawing yes I'm going to prove to you that anyone can draw and you can actually add your own drawings into your artwork but also into your junk journals i'd love it if you could leave me a comment below hit the like button if you enjoyed what you saw today and of course please subscribe if you haven't already i will see you next time and in the meantime keep creating enjoy